What really uh, was the main force driving the market lower today? Moreover, the market started to ignore the debt ceiling agreement, instead focusing in on the slowing manufacturing numbers which are coming in from all over the globe. We have seen uh, softer numbers coming through from China as well as Germany, some um, contracting numbers coming through from the likes of Ireland and the UK, and of course overnight in the US we did see the manufacturing numbers come at, coming out there and disappointing. The ISM read was 50.9 when the market was expecting to see a read of 55 points. So we have seen stock markets reacting and it has been a negative session. The Australian market down by 1.4%. On the Aussie session in particular, we did see heavy selling in the banks and we did see building approval numbers for June disappointing. Now this is the second month in a row where we have seen these numbers disappointing market expectations with a slide. The market was expecting to see a gain of 3%, but instead we saw a loss of 3% for the month of June. In fact, a loss of 3.5% for the month of June. So the banks seeing heavy selling there, the material sector coming under pressure, the healthcare sector coming under pressure as well. It's also day two of the Diggers and Dealers Conference in Kalgoorlie. And if we have a look at yesterday, we did hear uh, presentations coming through from the likes of Newcrest, Sandfire, Integra, as as well as Alaska Gold. And if we have a look at all four of these stocks, all bucking that negative trend on the market today and managing gains, Sandfire the best out of the lot, managing a gain of more than 6%. But overall, the market was, uh, it was a negative day with a loss of 1.4%. Following today's decision from the RBA, where to for here uh, from now for the Aussie, especially considering the greenback is getting some support following the US's default avoidance? Well, in the last week, we've seen that Aussie dollar really reaching that brand new high. So not surprising to see the Aussie dollar falling back after that interest rate decision by the Reserve Bank. It was interesting to see that at the forefront uh, seems to be the global worries uh, and uh, offsetting that are the inflation worries here domestically. But if we have a look at where all the action was in terms of the currency market, the Japanese yen uh, was what traders were watching and intervention once again uh, what uh, currency traders are watching for Japanese officials coming out to say that they would consider yen selling uh, given the strength that we have seen in the Japanese yen which could derail the recovery that we're seeing in Japan's economy. Let's just talk uh, corporate uh, front for a minute obviously Kathmandu coming out with some surprisingly strong sales results today but it's no reason to get excited with the rest of the retailers continuing to really struggle. The rest of the retailers have been struggling, so it is surprising to see Kathmandu coming out with a very strong result given the slump that we have seen in general apparel. But it does look like outdoor adventure, clothing and equipment doing very well. In fact, sales jumping by 25%. A lot of that has been driven by Kathmandu's aggressive strategy in opening new stores, especially here in Australia. If we have a look at same store sales, still up by 15.7%, so a decent result. And it does look like that high Australian dollar also causing traffic travelers to go overseas and that's been good news for Kathmandu's sales as well. So Kathmandu having a fantastic day, the shares up more than 6% and a great result. The forecast uh, for the current financial year has been quite strong as well. They're predicting that earnings before interest and tax will increase by 31 to 36%. So the shares really rising on the back of that strong forecast. Transparency between the price of gold and the reaction to the local gold uh, companies here in the recent weeks. We have seen a bit of disparity. That's because uh, gold in Australian dollar terms uh, is usually quite different from the US dollar terms. And usually if we do see a rise in gold prices, then we also see a rise in the Aussie dollar, which is seen as a commodity-based uh, currency. But today we did see some strong buying in the gold ETF, which was up by 2.1%. We did see a fall in the Australian dollar, which helped that Aussie dollar gold price. But as John mentioned, it was that central bank buying uh, that really drove buyers into gold today, as well as gold companies. And we did see Korea buying into gold um, a huge amount and it does look like Greece second month in a row that we've seen buying from the Greece's central bank as well so if we do see these central banks around the world diversifying away from US dollars into gold and that trend continuing that could be a positive story for gold so Newcrest mining up by 1.1 percent Oceana gold doing well today up by 3.1 percent and GOLD gold the ETF up by 2 percent